Hi all, right back with more Red Storm double defection scenario two. Good old Uncle Sam. This will be part thirteen. Uh, not long, just rewatched. Uh, this is the same day as I recorded part twelve, so I've looked over. I'm just uploading it now. However, I did notice one mistake. I think um, put a comment in the header about it. Um, so yeah, but that would be all to talk about because I've not not give Jan, John a chance to uh, uh, make any comments yet. Um, yeah, we thought we had Mu Vegas um, safely through Bad Hersfield now and without any issues. And yes, <laughs> well, I even talked about the reason he's actually not detected anymore is because I said he was in a. A mountain hex. Well, I suppose he could be classed as being in rough as well, but um, I said I could. He is in a mountain hex now. Let me just check then. Can I say that he's not in the mountain hex because he's on the spine and he's in this hex? I might be able to get away with that. It's just he's at deck level, and yeah, my comment was that I think I've just crashed into the mountain. <laughs> uh, however, I mean. In 6.34 on page 10, Mountain Terrain, it does say flights already at deck altitude may not enter mountain hexes, exception flights with terrain falling radar. And at first I thought, oh, I'm getting away with it because it's the F-16, but it's not the F-16. Nah, Vegas flight is the F-4 Wild, Wild Weasel. And he does not have terrain falling radar. Um, so it's not that I've just, I can just say I've made a mistake and that's me, I'm crashed, I'm dead. But it actually tells you you can't actually move in there at deck altitude. However, let me just double check, that'll be back and yeah, flight facing hex sides, right, give me a sec. Uh, right, well, I'm not really sure, and I, I, I knew there was a bit regarding this, this is hex sides 6.12 on page 9. Uh, and, and it's really only for the purposes of attacking. Well, attacks and stacking. Uh, a flight occupying a hex side occupies both hexes sharing that hex side. Uh, okay, well, actually. Attacks against the flight can be made into either hex, attacking player choice, attacking a flight on a hex side. Attacking port designates which hex the attack takes place in. Okay, I suppose that first bit for the purposes of attacking and stacking attacks and stacking. That's not really what we're looking at here, but I suppose you could consider it being under stacking. It's well, not. It's not really relevant to stacking, but a flight occupying a hex side occupies both hexes sharing that hex side. So that kind of tells me that. I don't think I can be in that hex at deck altitude. Uh, but let me know if I'm wrong. Because I guess I might have been thinking that I can maybe choose at the moment what sort of hex that I'm sitting in. Because if we were in here, it would be mountain. If we were in here, it would be rough. So, yeah. Um, so I'm thinking, what well, I came through there and I went straight, straight. Or well, could I not have... When I hit there, done a 30 degree turn then. And then, yeah. Let, let me just do that way. Now, I'm, I'm in rough, I'm still in rough at deck altitude. So, I think that still gets me the undetected state, doesn't it? Uh, all detected NATO flights at deck and rough. Yeah, so I would have I would have automatically become undetected in there as well. So let's just assume I've done it that way. Because, I mean, if it was a mistake, and like I say, then I would be classed as crashed and it was my own fault. Then I would, I would take that, I would accept that, although it seems stupid. But it doesn't actually allow you in the rules to move into that hex at deck level. Unless, me being on the spine, I could choose which hex I was in. And then it would have been okay, but I don't know about that one. I can't really see it there, so... If anybody wants to confirm that that might have been the case. Okay, that's all that we had that was wrong. Um, so move on, Grant, move on. Don't try and stretch it out to your usual 20, 30 minutes. Uh, okay, so we need an event. We need the sequence of play. We need to roll an event. So let's do that. 
12. Um, okay, find it out. Oh, there, there, there. Well, hang on. There's some that don't count. Eh? For scenario 2, 11, then 14, 15. No, 12 is okay. Oh dear. Mechanical failure. 12 to 13, mechanical failure. I'll show you this. Well, it doesn't sound good. Right, I haven't looked at the solo rules just to see if there's any amendment or, or alteration in this. My guess is there probably is. Mechanical fa failure. Roll 1d10 again. 1 to 5 at the Warsaw Pack. 6 to 10 NATO. For the selected side, if there is a damaged aircraft, that aircraft becomes crippled. If there is a crippled aircraft, it crashes. Oh well, there's there's a place when it can crash. I was asking about that. How can an aircraft crash? I was thinking, well, you just done it, mountain, <laughs> going in a mountain. But <laughs> right. um, applies to only one aircraft. The opposing player may select multiple choices. Roll for bail like normally, but there is no morale check on the flight. Well, we don't have any damaged or crippled aircraft anyway, so um, this is just going to be a whole lot of nothing. Just wanted to check um, what the bought random event. That's their mechanical failure. Uh, selection priority, crippled aircraft, damaged aircraft. Randomly selected more than one on human side in either category. Alright, is it is it oops is it the opposing player that gets to choose like is it the, if it was a two player opposing player may select if multiple choices. Right, ah okay. Um well there's no point rolling. We don't we don't have any damaged or crippled aircraft, either of us. So um okay, we'll just play that as a no effect then. Okay, jamming phase is no jamming in this scenario at all. Detection phase, roll to detect undetected flights. Uh, right, there's only one, two, th one, two, three. There's only four flights on the, on the map, yeah. Three of them ours. Two of our flyer, flights are detected and his flight's detected. So we're only really rolling for this flight. Um, so that would be a roll... Now, hang on, though, we're at deck. So this is a NATO flight at deck in Ruffer Mountain, so there's going to be a minus four to this roll. There's rolling on the C column. Um, so with a minus four modifier. We rolled 17. I think he's got me. 17 minus four is 13 still. Yeah, he only did 12, so... So that is detected. Maybe not a big deal though, really. Um, so that's normal detection, but everything is now detected on the map, so we don't need to look at other possible detection attempts um, for that. Yeah, okay. Okay, so on the movement phase. So the big um, initiative roll though. So roll to determine initiative 1 to 6, it's NATO. Here we go. It's a four, so it is NATO again. So I have been lucky with initiative rolls. So, yeah, we're going to take the initiative, aren't we? So let's draw a chit. No, I've not left any chits outside the cup, no. No, because I didn't draw a chit the last time for the Warsaw Pack, because they were just... We had moved everybody, haven't we? Right, let's see what we get. Um, well, we, we just want a one. We don't want the zero. Oh. oh, it's two for large. Ooh. Oh, no. It says the zero. It is the zero. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Um, right then, so we've got the Warsaw Pact. And as long as they don't draw the zero, uh, they're going to get to act first. That's a three on the large side, so my guess is it's at least a one. Yeah. So they do have the initiative. I'll just try that back in the cup because they've only got one flight. Yeah, thought that was going well. And then, yes. Okay. Um, so what are we going to do then? We need the soul query card five. That's not it. Must be this one. 
Um, well, a strange thing here, I think, is... Oh, no, that's not going to be the case, is it? Because that, is that is the nearest flight. Yeah, because I was thinking, well, we might randomise between different flights, but, well, I suppose if there was one, I mean, that's only two X's away. And, yeah, the other ones are too far away. So, and he can do BVR. And remember, we're just at engagement actions here because we don't need a roll to pick a flight. There's only one Warsaw Pack flight. There's not any markers on him that he needs to remove or anything like that. So we're just going straight to engagement actions. And um, we're going to attempt, uh, attempt, attempt standard air, -air combat. Uh, determine target. Select nearest detected human player flight. Ignoring human player flights, start with bot flights. Random select ties. Well, we don't need random select ties. Move as follows. Combat or dash, whichever is needed to engage. Move to enter enemy flight hex at same altitude, if able. Well, we're both at medium altitude. Um, and move to enter enemy flight hex at same altitude, if able. From rear hemisphere, if possible. So... The most speed we could get at medium is five. Yeah, at dash. Is that possible to get? Um, right. I, I, I'm probably better pausing that, but I'll wait and see if seeing if this is doable. Um, I think it probably is. To get because rear hemisphere just needs to, well no hang on that's his rear beam isn't it so maybe it's not I think we need to get back well hang on no we need to get into this hex don't we because remember we are we need to engage here which means enter in the hex or a hex adjacent to it right hang on I'll let me pause and have a look and think uh, I don't think I can do this. I thought I could, but I wonder what if we use the speed four? Because then we get one hundred and twenty degree. Hmm. Right, right. Let me think of that actually. Ah, yeah, I think we can do it that way. So, because I was I was using dash roll and taking a speed of five, but my turns were limited to ninety max and thirty as the three turns. But if we knock it down to speed four, our maximum turn in the in the hex is 120 and 60 in the free turn. So if I went from there, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use this just to sort of weigh this out. So one, then free turn. Uh, we've got a speed of four, remember, so that's one. Then two free turn is 60 degrees. 30, 60, so we're facing up. That's two movement points. Then three movement points into there. And then my fourth movement point, turning 120 degrees. That's 30, 60, 90, 120. That's right, that 30, 60, 90, 120. Yeah, that works. At least I think it does. Um, we're at the same altitude. We're engaged right behind them. Um, and that's what it wants to do, isn't it? It wants to... Um, I mean, it says move to enter enemy flight hex at the same altitude. I'm not actually entering the hex, but it doesn't matter. Because you go into the hex anyway, do you not? Hmm... I think it's okay. I mean, it says the defender must be within one hex. This is a standard air, -air combat engagement prerequisites. Um, and in the same altitude band or the band immediately below, well, we would be in medium. Um, and that's what it wants. It wants us to be at the same altitude. And then it says in different, if in different hexes, the attacker must have the defender in its forward arc, which I would have. Um, 
yeah, I think that's okay. I know in the in the actual bit it says that I'm wanting to move right into the hex. Uh, now there's one modif. Well, I think that's why we're trying to get at the rear, isn't it? Because that's what there's a modifier. Air to air combat geometry. That was that. This is that. Uh, right, hang on. Yeah, I think it's this modifier that comes into it. I was a bit confused by this. If the attacking fight is in the defender's forward or forward beam arcs, geometry modifiers are zero zero. If the fact if the attacker is in the defender's rear or rear beam arcs, the geometry modifiers are plus one attacker, minus one defender. I think that's that's where we would be. If the fight's in the same hex, the arc used is the one that would have applied in the hex occupied by the last fight to enter the hex. Yeah. So I think we still get the modifiers, and I think that's what we're trying to achieve. If I had the extra movement point to do it, then it would move directly into the hex. But you're going to move into the hex with the engagement anyway. So I don't think there's a problem when we're doing it that way. Right, okay, well we're gonna we're gonna go for this. Hopefully this is okay. Um okay. So I'm gonna make that move that I've just said. So we're not gonna set dash throttle. Basically, the, the, the wee diamond A flight is where I'm ending up. I've got four movement points at medium altitude and not using dash throttle. Uh, so, like I say, we've got a better turning capability. So, one, free turn. Two, free 60 degree turn, which turns me facing north, if, if that is north. And then, that's two movement points. Three movement points. Now, I could do a free turn in here, but... It doesn't matter because I'm going to use my last movement point to turn 120 degrees. And we'll just take that away now. To end up there. And we declare our combat. And we're at the rear. We've got the same altitude. Both at the same altitude and he's attacking he's from the rear. That was always movement points used up. Um, so it's the F-16 against the... F twenty one. Uh okay. Right, well let's just check the prerequisites again. Look at um attacker must have an undepleted air air weapon. Yeah, he's got I don't know how good they are, but he's got um IRM, he's got R thirteen M missiles with a depletion number of six, so the likelihood of um going any further than this one attack it's probably quite low it's probably going to deplete his weapons um must not be disordered aborted yeah all a or some attacks are resolved now i don't think there was any of them like i say we did move through we did move adjacent to this flak however remember that the bot when uh mike pointed that out to us even uh, caught out John Brown. Um, fire on any enemy flight in range early possible. Ah, this is a action table. Ignore bot player flights. Deconfliction applies at all altitudes. So any friendly fire from them, they, they just don't. They don't do it. Not for the solo game. Um, so I don't. There was no other checks to be made. We didn't fly through uh, an enemy AA. So I think that's all good. I think we're all good there. So that's the prerequisites. Um, and it says the engagement attempt itself costs no additional movement points. And that's why we move into the hex with the, with the final sort of thing. Yeah. Look down. No, that's for BVR. That's for BVR. Okay. So engagement role though. Now, this is where I mean... For standard air air combat, if the prerequisites have been met, the attacker and defender make separate engagement rules. Yeah, so there is, a, there is a chance this might not happen as well, isn't it? Right, I'll get the chart out and I'll keep the rules open at this bit because we've not really... And well, I know we've done it in the first scenario, but um, that's been a while. Or two. Um, yeah. So, what am I looking for? Probably, well, I might keep that handy. I think it's play rate card one, isn't it? There's the one that's got all the... Yeah, that's it there. So I want to see the engagement. 
Was it the maneuver but maneuver but yeah. No, no. Standard air air combat sequence. Standard air air engagement requirements. Yeah, here we are. Ah, here we are. Yeah. Okay. Right, I've got it. Hang on. All right, okay, so there's the requirements that I've just been looking through. Um, yeah, Defender within one hex and same altitude or one altitude below. Defender detected and not stacked with friendly flight. Yeah, I forgot. Need to be detected, but all flights on the map are detected right now. If not in same hex, attacker has Defender in forward arc. That is that is the case. Attacker is undepleted weapon. And then not disordered, aborted, or did SAM avoidance, yada yeah. All A and SAM attacks and current hex resolved. Okay, so the engagement role. Um, what am I? Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah, we both do this role, of course. Yeah, I'm looking down here at the results and wondering what all this means, but we're both going to do this. And, um, yeah, so roll greater than or equal to the engagement value to engage. And um, then if we get these results, if the attacker gets a yes and defender gets a yes, then these are the results you get. So if we both happen to get a no, then no combat's going to occur. And uh, that'll be him moved and whatever. So um, to be honest, we want his result to be a no because then we've got a chance, even that one, if we get a yes, it's a defender's choice, but we get no surprise or disadvantage. Okay, well, let's roll. Well, we roll for him first, yeah. So, greater than or equal to engagement value. F15 flight, so it'll get. Well, it's not BVR. So, we're not looking at this column. We're not looking at this because we are detected. I thought I had said you had to be detected there. Was that not one of the. Defender detected. Ah, okay, so the attacker could have been undetected. But the defender's got to be detected, I think. Right, anyway, and it's it's during the day. So we've got, a, the base value's 10, but we've got some modifiers there. So base value of 10. Um, so all the, all the modifiers apply, but it's only the two that would apply for BVR. But I'm, the way I'm reading that, they all apply to normal air air combat, but only they two would apply to BVR. Yeah? I think so. Okay, so... Um, aggression value for the... MiG-21. He's got an aggression value of zero, so no modifier there. Target and different altitude band... No, we're both at the same. Flight is disordered. No, target is making a slash attack. Uh, um, well, no. I don't know if that was... Was that highlighted at all in any of the rules for the bot? Slash attack? Let me just double check. I'm not seeing it. I mean, general bot behaviour is there. The only one that got me thinking was bot flights always take the maximum number of shots but that's I think when we come down to you know do you want to take the shot or not because you might be depleting your weapons I think I think that's that one but slash attack well it's here isn't it slash attack or slash attack slash attack is the type of standard air air to attempt slash attack the attacker must be in dash throttle oh well we're not in dash throw. Uh, I'm assuming they just don't do this. I can't. I can't see anything there that talks about. Uh, well, what about the actual main, uh, main rules in the book, Grant? Hang on. Nah, I'm not. I'm not seeing any, and I'm. I'm just. Assuming that, I mean, these were advanced combat rules slash attack, so. Okay, so there's none of that. Um, 
the target is in rear hemisphere. Ah, yeah, that's where that's where we're going to get a minus one. So, but it's not for the Mig Twenty One. The target is in the front hemisphere, and that that's why they want to do that because that's going to give us a minus one. And I thought they were getting a plus one somewhere. Ah, uh, that's on the actual... That we... I think it's on the back of this. Clearly, that's with The one that I looked at. Don't think that comes into it just yet. So, that means there's no modifiers at all, is there? No, aggression values are zero. There's no difference in altitude. Uh, there's no target. There's no height. He's a mass and there's no mean conditions. Right, I'm just going to roll on this. And we're going to... Um, We're going to just... Well, he needs a 10 or greater. Yeah? Okay, let's do it. Oh, he's rolled five. Two and a three, poor roll. Okay, so that's a no. So, well, I'm not sure. We need, well, we need to roll anyway, just to see what happens. You never know. So for us, well, our aggression value is... Saying, so it's F16 as a plus one. So a plus one for that. No difference in altitude. Fight is not so target is in rear hemisphere, so we get a minus one for that. So that, that cancels out our plus one. So again there's no modifiers. We need a ten or yeah we need we need a ten or greater. Oh I've rolled nine. Eight and a one. Oh well <laughs> doesn't look like this is going to come in him, which I think is probably better for us. So, the attacker rule no, defender rule no, no, no combat occurs. Um, now, if he had any movement left, would he be able to attempt to engage again? Well, I think that's what you need to find in the actual rules, Grant. Well, he doesn't have any movement left. We know with BVR he can just move another, use another movement point and try and engage again, can't he? Um... Standard. If the target succeeds, no. If the defender's engagement attempt, no, that's not the one. If both the attacker's and defender's engagement attempts fail, no combat takes place, do not resolve combat or post-combat effects, and the attacker continues its movement. So, is he allowed to attempt it again? If he had an arm movement point, would he be able to move into the hex and try that again? I can't. I mean, I know you can do it with BVR. I just that doesn't feel like. I didn't really think of it as you were allowed to do it again for standard air to air for some reason. Uh, give me a sec. Ah, here we go. Yeah, I was about to give up on that. Just leave that with you, John. But I found it. So, back in, yeah, just going back to the sort of basics, 11.2 engagement, page 17. A fight may attempt to engage an enemy fight during its own movement. The moving fight is attacker and the non-moving fight is defender. Engagement must be ruled to determine whether combat can begin, and it refers to 11.22, which is what I've just been looking at, the engagement rule. Um... A fight may not attempt to engage the same enemy fight in standard air air combat more than once per movement phase. Uh, yeah. However, if the attacking flight fails to engage a flight, it may try to engage another flight in a different hex or altitude band later in that movement phase. But remember, we we don't have any movement points left, but that confirms that if we did have movement points left we couldn't attempt to engage Saint again. Sorry, they couldn't attempt to engage our F-16 Saint flight again. However, if there was, say, some, some other flight here, then they could move and try and engage that. Um, so there you go. So, yeah. And it just carrying on there just to make us think a bit better for me. It says, it follows on, a flight may attempt to engage only one enemy fight in BVR combat per movement phase, and the exception is the F-15s. However, unlike standard air air combat, if its first BVR combat engagement attempt fails, it may continue moving and make additional BVR engagement attempts against that same enemy flight. 
Okay, so that's how I thought it was. Just um, again, it's all buried in a sixty-page rule book. Well, I say buried. Uh, I'm not meaning it that way in a a bad way. It's it's in a sixty-page rule book though. So um, and my memory is not good at all. I don't think I'm starting to find. Uh, so well, I think I was. I think I was a good result for us because. Yeah, and he's used, he spent all his movement points. That's him, he's done his thing. He can't do anything else, I don't think. So it's over to us. We've got three flights to consider moving. We don't really need to care too much about Vegas. I'm not sure what Cobra's going to do, but the main one, and we might as well just do that now, is having a... Oh, yeah, I've not got the answer to my question, have I? Well, I'll need, I'll need to find out... Because um, I'm just uploading the video just now, so there is a chance I might not get... Um, my thinking was that John might have commented on my video before I got to this bit, but because um, cause I've got the time to do stuff tonight... Um, well, let's see if I can find it. And what I'm... Sorry if I'm not spelt this out right. Um, what I'm considering here is, can I attempt a shrike attack, an arm attack with my shrikes, and then move right in and follow it up with an EOGM attack. I get the feeling I'm not allowed to do that. So let me just hunt a little bit and see. Um, yeah, we don't need to draw initiative charts. They've used up all their flights. Uh, yeah, it's just whatever order we want to move our flights in. And I'm going to move my F-16s. And hopefully take out that SA-11. And then we'll just... Well, maybe just bug out, you know, and get out of there. Let, let the, the MiG-21 chase us if he wants, maybe. Well, we'll see. Right, let's see if we can do what it is I'm trying to do first. Mind you, we might be able to do this, because I'm forgetting, I mean, it's aircraft 2 of St. Flight that has the Shrike missile, and it's aircraft 4 of the F-16 Saint flight that has the EOGM missile. So couldn't they, like, go in as separate flights and one fire the Shrike and then one fire the other one? Sounds maybe feasible. Um, right, back to reading up and see if we can find it. OK, we're at rule 17 on page 31, which is air-to-ground attacks, 17.1 attacks. Uh, Non-disordered flights can attack ground targets. Let me, I'll show you this. Well, there we go. I think I might, I might get the information. I started reading it and I thought it looked like it was telling me something. Non-disordered flights can attack ground targets during the movement phase. An attack means conducting a bomb run, launching arms. Now, we kind of want to do both of them. That's the thing. Or launching cruise missiles. In general, a flight may only conduct one attack against... One attack against one target in a game turn, although the single attack on a target may include more than one shot of a PGM. Now, PGM... What's that again? 16 point... PGM ammunition. Oh, that's the bombs and the missiles. That's not the arms. That's not the ARMs. So, although the single attack on the target may include... Yeah, that's basically saying that... Yeah, we can't, we can't do this, can we? Because that is telling you there. In general, a flight may only conduct one attack against one target in a game turn. Although the single attack on a target may include more than one shot of a PGM. Which means I could fire... You know, if I had two EOGMs, I could fire two EOGM missiles. But it's kind of saying it's only one attack against a target. So that would be two attacks. Like one would be the arm attack, one would be the the EOGM attack. Um, you've got multiple sub-targets, but we, we don't have any of that. Um, yeah, that's assigning different aircraft to different sub-targets. Yeah, you, so maybe you could do some of that, but we've not got that. We've just got one target. Um, 
That's kind of telling me that I can't do it then, I think. Yeah, well, I'm, st I'm still not 100% sure, but I feel like that is telling me that um, that's a no-no. Um, yeah, I think I can, I can only go by what I just read there in, the, in Rule 17.1. In general, a flight may only conduct one attack against one target in a game turn. Uh, I mean, is that a separate attack we're doing? It's kind of, well, I don't know, it kind of is because it's two different methods of like, attacking the target. I don't think my video will be uploaded yet and the chances that John's looked at and <laughs> gave me an answer to that um, are probably unlikely but well, give me a sec, I'll go and have a look just in case Nah, the video's just, just uploaded now and it's, it's not been any use anyway so so I could hang on or just go with my thinking here because I, I still not really worked out if we fire the strikes and then the, the thing shuts down <laughs> There's that much to sort of consider with that. I've, I can't. I just can't sort of work it all out in my head. And I, again, maybe once you've done it that many times, um, but they say if, as we're going through this, we'll find out. So I, I think I need a couple of player aids. I need. I think I need player aid card two and three for this, don't I? Or maybe just one of them. Might just be three, no. Yeah, we're going to attack, yeah. yeah. I think it is. Okay. Um. Well, we, we might get some info on this just to see where we'd be at. Okay, hang on. So here's the air ground attack table. Oh, just I just noticed there's an arm launch marker as well, and that must be somewhere. I never used that. Um, although I suppose I knew what I was doing, but um, yeah, I probably should have put that down, just to signify that we had launched our arms. Um, yeah, I'm I'm going to say we can't do it, right? We're going to have to choose one or the other, and clearly the EOGM is going to be the better option, isn't it? Because we've we've already realised that if we do the arm attack with a shrike. Our modifiers are a plus one there. Mind you, we have it located this time. Oh, hang on. No, no, it's not about this, Grant, is it? It's about them doing the morale check, isn't it? And that's just a 50-50, isn't it? That's a roll and a... F oh, hang on, there was a modifier. Was that not about the shutdown? Right, hang on, hang on. Where's the ARMs? Air to ground attacks, right? Here we are. Arm. Um, yeah, roll. Roll one arm morale check for each arm shot launched at the target. For each check, roll one die. If the final roll is equal to or less than five, the radar shuts down. Add one to the roll if the launching flight is undetected. All oh, right, okay. Subtract one for the roll with the arm as one's from 10. Right, okay. Right, it's got nothing to do with it being located there. I thought maybe it was something to do with the... But it's not. It would, we would get a minus one if we were undetected, but we're not. So that's a 50-50 chance. Uh, and then all it's going to do is shut the radar down. Um, and I think I can take my chances because I'm not even acquired or anything like that. So we need to go acquire me. So I, I think we're just going to skip by the Shrike attack and um, just go for a bomb and run and use the EOGM. We've only got one of them. Um, so we don't... Well, we're at medium altitude just now, so we need to adjust that. We don't want to be at medium. So that gives a minus two. Um, we shouldn't have any... A modifiers, no, it looks a clean run in to do it. Sam attack possible hit, well we shouldn't 
we won't have that. No, because that Sam can't attack us, can it? It's not acquired us or anything. It needs to acquire us, doesn't it? Yeah. And it only just turned back on at the end of last turn. And we've not got to the Sam acquisition phase. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. So there's none of that. Good contrast, no. EOGM attack on target profile A. Um, SC11. Does it tell you in the wee card? Yeah, it's a C. The SC13 is a B. The SC11 is a C. So no. Uh, attack at night, Warsaw Pack, EOGM attack. So no modifiers. No. Yeah, no, no modifiers there. And so we're looking at on the EOGM column here a seven or greater, a seven or better to get a one a one success hit. And I say no modifiers. We need to get away from medium altitude. We need. To, oh, we can't attack from high. I don't think. We need. To, we need to drop to low. Yeah, attacks are not permitted from high. Uh, and no line of sight issues through mist, haze, layer, coil layer. IP three hexes away, target must be attacked from one or two hexes away. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's do this then. And uh, let's just hope that we can't be using that trike and we've got that right. I feel like it is, but... So, for the Falcon, we need to set our... Speed, so we need to go one, two, three, four. We need to move at least four hexes. We need to also drop an altitude band. We can do that freely. Um, should we probably now? We can't, we can't turn, can we? When we're doing it, but. Right, can't make a turn. Bomb runs. Yeah, without turning. Um, but after. After that, if we had movement points left. After completion of the run, if or if the player decides to skip the target, the flight must. Return to its flight path. Right, I don't know what I'm reading there. Three turns are not permitted directly after an attack, i.e. before another movement point. Yeah, once the attack has been executed, the flight finishes the remaining movement. But I, I read that wrong at first, cause this next bit, it says three turns are not permitted directly after attack, but then in brackets, if you read that, it says, i.e. before another movement point is expended. So what that means is, you know, if we reach this hex and... F well, if we reach this hex and fire... We cannot then do a free turn in that hex. We could move into that hex and do a free turn. And then, you know. Problem with that is, if we're going to be at speed, what speed can we be at? F-16 laden at medium altitude. We could be at 5, which means we can only turn 30 degrees. Eh? Uh, yeah. We can only turn 30 degrees. However, we, it, it says you can, can't do a free turn, but can we not just end... Can we not just go one, two, three, four, launch our missile, and then turn in the hex... Pay a movement point to turn in the hex? Because it says you just can't use free turns. Yeah. Um, one, two, three, four, launch, F and then, but then we can move five free turn, but then it's only a 30 degree free turn, isn't it? So if I don't use dash, I've only got a movement of three. Well, that's not any good. Well, actually, I have to do, I have to use dash. 
Right, okay, so I'm setting dash throttle. And at medium altitude, I laid in, fly, I laid in F16 flight is, um, has a speed of 5. So we're going to use 1. And we're going to drop to low altitude as a free, free drop to low altitude. Um, okay. That's one movement point. And then two, um, three, that's another two movement points. Right, I'm not sure if I might be turning, uh, three turning. Well, that's where I set my IP as well. That's where I set my bomber on. And maybe a bit more space going. Um, so that's us three away. So yeah, I think I will finish that with a free turn there, onto that spine. And uh, I've got two movement points on half one into there. Yeah, that's fine. I think that's fine. So then I'll move one into there and we will launch. That's me, got one movement point left and we will fire at the SC11 with our UGM. And then with my one movement point left, I'll probably just turn. It's not, not gonna be a free turn, I'm gonna spend the movement point to turn in that hex. Basically, I don't wanna like run into that. I don't wanna go over, the, over that. And I want to, like, move away from that as well, so, well, yeah. It's not really, move it's not, I'm not moving any more hexes, but I don't want to carry on moving to that hex, I don't think. No, no, okay. Right, so we're going to, we're going to fire now, we're on a bomb and run, we're going to fire. Yeah, so... Right, that's it. That's well, we've just looked at this already. So there's no modifiers at all. We're not a medium altitude. I dropped to low. Uh, none of the other things apply. Yeah, there's nothing. Nothing else that applies there. So we've no modifiers. We're firing. We're rolling on the EOGM column. We don't have. We only have one weapon. Um. I'm just going to mark that off now because we are firing that now. That means we've only got a shrike left, but I think it is. We're just going to ditch that unless something goes horribly wrong here, which is possible. Right, so I need a seven or better. Two dice. Here we go. Oof. One of them was a two, the other one's a zero, and I thought, oh. But it's a 10, isn't it? So it's 12. So no, not quite so bad. In fact, probably pretty good. Oh, it's in a 3 for a 12. I was like, kind of thought, well, I seen the 2 first and I thought, oh my God. So 12 on the EOGM is a 3 result. So that's, uh, yeah, that's wonderful. So it's over here and I was just swithering there. But yeah, this is right. So we got our success value 3. So we're on this column here. Now, this isn't an infrared SAM, remember? So the suppression, the slight results would be okay. However, you can see a three, we're looking, we're looking for an H or, or a T. So there's no modifiers on this. We're just gonna roll two dice on this column. So again, nice and high. This is good, 14, this is good. That's got to be enough, surely. Oh, it's not. We need a 16 for a T. So 13 to 14 on the three success values as an H result. And for a Sam, yeah, it's just the same. It's heavy damage. And I think we said that heavy damage just, that means that that's it. There's nothing, that Sam's out of commission, isn't it? It's off, it's busted, it's done. Um... 
so yeah, good. Yeah, I can't, I mean, I can't complain because I think we get better points for that as well. So, yeah, this probably switches off as well, but I don't think it matters as long as it's got that heavy marker on it. That's telling us all we need to know. Um, yeah, and that's everything. So I'm going to use my last movement point. Mm. No, because I don't want to run into the hex. I mean, I could move into there and then, then do a free turn. Oh, hang on. Yeah, no, no, that works. Sorry, because I'm on the spine there, am I? So, yeah, so I'm going to use my last movement point to move in there and then do the free turn. Now, I couldn't do the free turn in there, remember? Oh, did I do anything on my bomb run? Uh, I probably did. I probably did, didn't I? I probably did three turns coming in. After saying that I couldn't do it, I probably did it. Uh, duh. Okay, um. Oh, sorry, that's. We're at dash, aren't we? Um. Right, I'm. I'm pretty sure I could still have done it and flying straight, so I might not be in that hex facing that direction. But clearly I'm wanting to do what I've done and if I think I maybe done a cheeky wee free turn in the in the middle of the bomb run there. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. When I hit my bomb run. Is it when you start the bomb run that, that kicks in? I think it was, isn't it? We just read it. Um Announce the bomb run starting and the target and the hex is being attacked, then move the flight from the IP directly towards the target hex without turning. So it would have just been that first movement point I spent. So if I did make a turn in that first movement point when I moved, then obviously I'll need to take that back and it might end up being that I'm in this hex maybe and I've done a full turn to, to complete my last movement point. I'll have a look at that back in the video, but I think you can see I could have still done it okay. It's just a... Go excited there. <laughs> right, so, yeah, I'm just double-checking that heavy damage on the SA-11. I get six points for that. So we didn't destroy any of them, but heavy damage, so that's six. Another six for the other two is 12. And another four for the two... Migs we shot down is 16. So we've got 16 points. 10 to 19 is a victory. So unless that MIG-21 gets really jiggy with us and, you know, takes, takes out a couple of flights, then we should be all right. I can't really see that happening now, but, um, no, you never know, I suppose. Uh, right. Well, that's well. That's unfinished, isn't it? He's he can't do anything. Eh? Yeah, no, I don't roll in order. And so we've done our thing. Well, can I now? Look, I mean the strike's not any good to me anyway. Can I jettison now? At any time during movement, ordnance may be jettisoned. Or yeah, okay. Hmm. Yeah, I just jettison my ordnance. Yeah. Because that last movement point that I used, and we know I might have made a wee glitch here. but So with that last movement point that I used, I'm going to jettison my Shrike, my cell. So now I'm clean. And I'm a multi-role flight of F-16s. And there's four of us, by the way. There's four of them. Yeah, there's four aircraft in that flight. So, yeah, we might well just turn against that fish bed. Yeah, why not, Grant? Why not? So, and we do have... Uh, we do have BVR capabilities. If we're head-on, we've got a range of two. So it's not, not terrible. They're... Um, Missiles are their depletion number six as well, so we're probably gonna probably only gonna have maybe the one shot at them, but yeah. Okay, so I've done that. So now we're clean and we can we we can change our task to cap. I think we just automatically decide that we're going to do that. Okay, so we've still got two flights to move. 
yeah, we can just quickly get this and get this parked on actually, Grant, and maybe come back a bit later and finish this off. Um. Okay, so Vegas um, is at deck altitude. That's a well weasel on it. Oops. He's at deck. He's got plenty of fuel points, but I mean, it's just heading them west, taking away the turns, really. I don't know. <clears throat> Can the scenario end? I'm assuming if we were to take out the MiG-21 aircraft, it would end. Yeah. The last 12 turns it says, so. <gasps> What's recovery roll? At that point, roll for recovery for all fights that have not yet recovered. Well, John's never said anything. I just removed that pool of flight from the map. Yeah, no, they were they were shot down. Recovery, is that to do if you crippled or damaged or something? Because we've not really had any of their results yet. Yeah, I think so. Um, well, I don't, it, doesn't get, it doesn't say that the scenario ends any other way, but obvious, I think obviously if they've, the Warsaw Pact have no flights left, then we will, we'll just end it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see the... So yeah, we might we might have a go at him. But I don't think we should bother trying to do it with Cobra or Vegas. Cobra's only got guns left. So let's get Vegas out of there then. Just move them further away, really. Just in case. Because in actual fact... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6... No, he's not within 7 of that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... He is with that. So he's going to react to that. So... Right. Um... Well, you know what? I'll not bother doing dash throttle. What are we? Are we clean? Vegas. Yeah, he's no weapons left. He's not air to ground. So he's got a movement of four. Not using dash. So we'll just stick with that. One, three turn. And then two, three, four. Uh, just, just stay in a deck. Yeah, that's fine. And then Cobra flight. Oh, put a wee cube on that. Not that we really need it now, but just in case we get dragged away. In. So Cobra flight has. Where is he? Um, we well, just need to watch the full full that airfield. He's just going to head west as well, I think. So he's clean, obviously, and he's at medium altitude. So he could dash at six. I think that would work. He could probably come, as long as he keeps away from that hex, mind you. Yeah, that's fine. I think I will dash him then. At six. And we'll go one... Three turn thirty degrees, two three four, two movement points left. Um, well actually we can thirty degree turn into there. Two movement points left. Five, six. Yeah, that's fine. And he stayed at medium altitude, and he's just he's just getting out of there as well. Okay. Um, and that's him done. So nice and quick finish there. Okay. Well, unless we've just rushed through that and made a complete mess of things. Right, um, so my player, my sequence of play card back, just to keep me right. That's us done our movement. Fuel phase, right, there was two dashed, I think. So, Saint is dashed. So we'll mark an R fuel off for him. Right, he's gonna have to watch a little. He's still got three more fuel points. And um Cobra dashed as well. Uh Cobra Cobra. 
He's got the top. Yeah, he's got plenty. Um, yeah, and the the MiG-21 did not, did it? No, yeah, because I changed it so that he was able to get behind us. Uh, okay, so that's that done. Um, Sam location fees, we don't need to do any of that. Track fees, all detected. Well, he's, he's actually going to go undetected again because he's at deck and he's in rough. I can take these off anyway. Um... He's the only flight at deck. I can take that bomber on marker off. He's the only flight at deck. So he automatically becomes undetected. Not really that it matters. And then we roll on the... Yeah, we've got, we've got two flights that are detected still. A spade and a heart, is it? No, a diamond and a heart. So we're rolling on the C column. I've got a 14. That's probably bad. Well, actually, it's a spade. Oh, I think that's exactly the same thing that happened the last time, wasn't it? And he's a spade. Yeah, I rolled a 14 the last time. Right, okay, never mind. Uh, and the uh, Warsaw Pack Flight's a diamond, so we're rolling on the D column to see if he becomes undetected. I uh, rolled a 10 on the D. That's a heart. And brackets, so no. Get the feeling that was the same result as well. Okay, so no undetection. Well, apart from the automatic one. Um, Sam acquisition phase. Well, none of that needn't happen. We've we've heavily damaged all three Sams on the map. Uh, admin phase. We don't need to remove shutdown markers. Um, I don't think there's any markers to come off. You know what, this parachute may well now turn into a crew who gets rescued and comes off. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. That's good. I'm speeding up a little bit now, but uh, I was making a few mistakes, so we're going to have to keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's everything. So now, now the only thing we've really got, I mean, there are two fights are just going in. They're going to get out of there. I don't think they can get caught. So it's just what we do about this. I think we should probably give it a go. He's going to try and go for us anyway, so... Uh, he doesn't have BVR, and we do, so there you go. Hmm. Right, okay, I'll move the dice on uh, turn seven. And... Yeah, I'll just copy this across and uh, I might take a little break, but I should get this finished tonight, I think. Uh, you've said things like that before, Grant. But, um, yeah, okay. Well, I'll be back. I'll be back tonight to do a, a bit of it anyway. Ho hopefully finish it off. Okay, cheers.